we continue uh, with the questions from last time because counseling is something very difficult to learn the reason why it's difficult to learn because it's difficult to listen it's difficult to be gentle it's difficult to guide people it's difficult to respect people and and believe that that people and they when they're willing to change by the help by the help of God they can change it's very often some counselors they you know they just want to accuse the counselee and they don't think they could change and they don't uh, give them hope instead they give them uh, accusation that's not going to work so it, it's not easy so we're going to go through this counseling again the questions now this time is the questions and I hope you all uh, learn this well and remember remember how to apply it and this would be very very helpful okay so the first question is how did God counsel Jonah to change uh, God Jonah uh, God counseled Jonah to change by now did I go through this some questions already did I do this and you can send uh, to me and I think I have gone through some of this let me see um, Okay, I'll start with question five. Now, if I've gone through this, you can tell me. Explain the health of a whole person in this area. Spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, interpersonal relationship, environment, group, meaning, and purpose of life. So the purpose of counseling and also for ourselves, to, for us to counsel ourselves, we need to counsel ourselves. That we need to counsel ourselves and then we... Um, and the goal is that we are spiritually healthy, that we have a close relationship with God we have a healthy relationship with God that's very important and physical health so that a person is physically able uh, to handle his problem that he sleep well he eat healthy food and sleep early uh, and take good care of his body and have exercise and mental that his thinking is healthy and the emotional that he does not live in constant depression or sadness or anger this would destroy a person. So I hope we all understand that this would destroy our person. Okay, I see something there. Um, let me see. Wait, okay. Now, and then uh, an interpersonal relationship is that we can relate to people. We can talk with people. We can communicate with people. We can care about people. All these are very important. Okay, and then um, environment is that we accept environment being built by God, so we like it, we enjoy it. And group health is that we have good relationship with family members and church members and uh, co-workers and meaning and purpose and purpose of life because each one of us need purpose. We need purpose in life. And so we... Uh, we, the purpose is in God. God has a plan for us. So w if we uh, live in God, we have a close relationship with God, then you find meaning that we can be blessed by God and we can bless other people. And number six, explain a person's health depends on his external and internal lifestyle, support system, and ability to handle difficult situations. So here, we, we all need to learn to handle different problems. And it and the ability to handle different problems be, depends on his external and internal lifestyle. External lifestyle, it means how he sleeps, how he talks with people, how to relate to people. Uh, and then internal lifestyle is how he thinks, how he feels. So he needs to have an external health, healthy system and an internal healthy system. And then support system from friends and from God, from family members from the spouse. So the spouse is for support, but many people, they abuse the spouse. They just want to get something from the spouse. The spouse is a person who can give us support. It's very important that we respect the person. We respect the person and love the person and care about the person. And then 
both sides love each other and then we can talk with each other can we love each other more and be nice to each other so that we uh, are blessed by God so that our marriage is a blessing to us and then um, ability to handle handle difficult situations that is when we face difficult situations that we have the ability to stay calm and find the source of the problem and handle it for instance some people when someone yell at them immediately they lose control and they shout and they yell and they fight they cry so they are, they cannot handle it we need to learn how to handle so this is very important and number seven explain the ability of a person as a social being to be alone and to be intimate with people so we all need to be be able to spend time with ourselves in prayer in bible study and also uh, to be intimate with people we can communicate with people make friends with people i'm sorry i think i've gone through this i think we'll go to the steps of counseling um, okay we go from here steps of counseling building a trusting relationship why is it important to have a trusting relationship with the counselee because if there is no trust the person is not going to talk about his problem he's not uh, trusting us uh, for the solution uh, for the guidance so we need to have a trusting relationship we need to have have love for the person care for the person so that we can help the person to to face his problem and number two how do we accept the feeling of a person who just lost some money uh, who just lost a family and so on okay if someone has just lost a family how can we accept the feeling so we have to imagine that we are the person who has lost a family if I, I have lost uh, uh, the money I've lost some money how would I feel so I would say oh if I lost some money I would feel bad I would feel I, I might feel guilty because I might, might have done something wrong so that I lose the money so we want to empathize with the person so uh, who just lost a family member so imagine our one of our family member has died how would we feel so we empathize with the person and say yes I know it hurts you greatly it makes you feel very sad and you you really treasure this person is very unfortunate that this person has passed away and so you feel very unhappy and then who was verbally abused by someone that someone yelled at him say things that hurts him then we'll say yes it's um, it's very difficult when someone hurts you like that and talk negative negatively to you all the time so you feel there is no way to communicate with him and he's abusing you all the time you have no way to talk to him in a peaceful way so you feel very desperate so we uh, you feel unhappy because of that so we empathize with the person okay and then someone who has committed adultery now we might want to say well you have committed adultery that's terrible but the person has already committed adultery and and he probably feels very sad about it so we instead of keep accusing him we're going to say yeah I know you feel unhappy because you have committed adultery you feel very unhappy about it and you feel guilty you you're afraid that it has hurt your relationship with God so I, I know that it's not easy for you and uh, uh, so we first accept the feelings before we go on to help this person to face God how to be how to believe that God can really forgive him and how to have real repentance and how to overcome the sin so we step by step but first we accept the feeling and then who always have arguments with his spouse now he always have arguments so we might say well you have done wrong but instead we can say uh, it might be hard for you to communicate with your spouse because both sides are not communicating well so we accept both sides difficulty let me tell you my experience when I counsel couples uh, I will listen to both sides for instance when the husband says that the wife sometimes necks him and make him feel very bad and the wife sometimes is emotional and the husband feels very bad and I would say oh I'm so sorry to hear that I know that you feel unhappy about it 
And then the wife would tell me, the husband doesn't listen to me, doesn't care about me, he just yells at me and, and say all kind of negative things to me. And then I would say to the wife, you must feel very unhappy because he doesn't listen to you, he doesn't uh, treat you nicely, so you feel very hurt and you feel very bad. So I would describe the feeling of both sides. I accept the feelings of both sides. I'm not saying they are right. They are both wrong. They both are problem. But I don't accuse them. I accept the difficulties they are facing. I accept the feelings. And then, now, there are many women I counsel, they say, thank me for listening to them and responding to them. But there are a number of times the husband said to me, I really appreciate you listen to, listening to me because most people don't listen to me. They just say you're wrong, you've done this wrong, that wrong, and they don't accept me. They just ac accuse me. But you are one person who listens to me and accept my feelings and accept my difficulties. And they feel very good that I was counseling him. So I hope we all do that, that we don't want to make people feel bad. We want to make people feel accepted, that they are precious, and that there is hope there is hope, there is future in counseling. They can uh, improve. Okay, uh, and then who disobeys the pastor. So someone has disobeyed the pastor. Then we still say, yes, I know you, you feel unhappy about it and uh, there might be reasons. Uh, can you tell me the reasons? And when they say the reasons, we don't say it's wrong. We don't say it's wrong. We say, okay, I know that it's difficult for you, that you're facing this difficulty, and then you, so that makes you disobey your pastor. So uh, we want to accept that first, and then we want to help the person to gradually how to accept his, understand his situation, find out the source of the problem, and overcome the problem. So we want to accept the feelings first before we help the person to, to accept his feeling and and find out his problems and how to find ways to solve the problem okay and someone who has broken a church equipment so this person feels very bad that he has broken for instance he has broken the projector and and then you cannot watch the the live broadcast and then you will feel very unhappy so this way you know, the person really feel bad. The person really feel bad. He, he, he's not, you know, he's done something wrong and he, he feels unhappy about it. But we still want to accept it. We want to accept it. And we want to say, yeah, I'm sorry you broke the equipment and it makes you feel very unhappy. So we, we want to accept the feelings and we want to uh, help them overcome the, the feelings and help them to uh, uh, you know, handle the feeling and also how to prevent, prevent in the future that he'll break equipment again. So we want to accept the feelings before we try to solve the problem, guide the person to solve the problem. Okay, who has broken the law of the country? He has someone who has broken the law of the country. Then we say, yeah, I know that you have broken the law and you feel very unhappy, you feel very bad and you, you might feel uh, uh, you might be afraid that the police might come to uh, arrest you any time, so you feel very bad about it. So we accept that. So the person feels accepted. And then we try to help the person to face a problem, and how can we face a problem, and how can we overcome this and face the crime that he has committed. So this is how we want to, how we want to uh, accept the feelings and help people to overcome. Okay, how to overcome the problem. I'm just adjusting the, the cell phone, excuse me. Okay, now, um, okay, who has been divorced? Someone who has been divorced, then will say, uh, you must be very unhappy that the other person divorced you. And we want to accept that first, whether it's his fault or the other person's fault. We still accept him and we say, you feel very unhappy, you feel lost now, and uh, and then we try to help the person to, to, uh, to face the, uh, to find out the, 
the source of problem, the reason of the problem, and is there any way to overcome the problem? Okay, and then question number three. Does accepting someone's feeling means we agree with what they do? No, it doesn't mean that. It, we just accept the feeling at that time. They have committed adultery. We don't agree with them that they committed adultery. We don't agree with them that they continue to feel guilty. We don't agree with them, but we accept that they are feeling guilty right now. What are the differences between accepting and agreeing? Accepting is I accept the feeling of the person at this point. He is feeling that this, this way. But agreeing means I agree with him that he has done this is okay. Now I don't agree with him. I don't think it's okay. I think it's wrong. But I still accept him uh, uh, in his situation. Okay. And then number four, how do we imagine that we have the same experience as the counselee and try to feel his feeling? For instance, if someone has been falsely accused by someone, so if someone has been falsely accused by someone, so we imagine that we have been falsely accused by someone, how would we feel? Now, some people have a tendency to say, well, don't, take, don't worry about him, don't think about him, just neglect him. These are just telling people what to do. So counseling is difficult because most people just tell people what to do. They just say, pray. Forget about him. Don't think about him. They just tell this uh, to the person. And people don't listen to that. They don't listen to that. And I'm sure that your spouse has spoken to you like this many times. That they say, don't do this. Don't do that. You just don't worry about it. You just pray. And everything will be fine. That, you know, that's many spouses, they will speak to the spouse like that. So we don't, uh, that doesn't solve the problem. We want to accept the feeling and guide the person to accept understand his problem uh, so what's where is the problem now and then find ways how to overcome the problem okay and then a worship team members has been late to worship so the person has been late um, and he's feel very sorry and sometimes people just say see what you've done you you're late and then we are all waiting for you or you ruined our time you have uh, wasted our time. Some people might talk like that, it, but it's not going to change. It's just going to make the situation worse. So instead of that, we can say, uh, yeah, I know that you don't feel happy because you're late. You feel guilty. Uh, you feel that you've done something wrong. If the person say, yes, I'm sorry, 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 I'm late. Now, what if the person doesn't feel he's late? That is a different thing than we confront and then, but we don't confront in front of people. We confront afterwards, but, and we confront. We don't want them to make, to feel bad. We can just say, uh, "I noticed that you have been late to the practice a number of times. Can you tell me what happened?" Because sometimes things happen out of his control. It's not him. It's someone else that caused him to be late. And then, if the person says it's his fault, then we say, uh, "What do you think is the reason that caused you uh, to be late? What can be done?" So we want to find out. Uh, uh, the, prob the source of problem and how to solve the problem. Okay, and then someone has been raped or robbed. So if someone has been raped or robbed, and then immediately we say, yeah, I know you feel very unhappy, you feel very hurt that has happened to you, it's very unfortunate, I'm very sorry to see this happen to you. So we want to accept the feelings and let the person pour out his feelings or her feelings first before we counsel to help them overcome their uh, negative feelings. Someone has to stay in a hospital. So s someone tell, tell us, I have to go to a hospital, I have to stay there, I'm very afraid. I, I, uh, so the person talks about his fear, then we accept his, his fear, accept his, uh, his problem that he, the doctor just told him that he has a serious disease. He would feel very s sad and uh, very afraid, then we want to respond to the person and say, I know you feel very afraid and uh, and we can ask them uh, uh, to find out exactly, uh, so do you feel afraid now? Do you feel fear now? Do you feel uh, hope, uh, helpless now? So we can find out and then respond to the feeling. Okay, and then someone has to go to jail. He has done something wrong and now he's going to go to jail. He already knows he's wrong. So we 
we don't say, wow, you deserve it. But instead we can say, I know it's difficult for you now that you have to go to jail and then now you cannot see the family members easily and you have all kinds of limitations so you feel very unhappy. So we accept the feelings first before we continue to help the person to overcome his guilt and also how to change his life. Someone has had a family fight. So we'll say, oh, I, I know it's difficult for you that, uh, uh, that the f you have the f your family fight uh, quite often and then the other person doesn't listen to you so you feel very unhappy. So we, we accept that feeling. Uh, someone has been falsely accused by another person. So we say, uh, yes, I know that someone accused you falsely and you feel uh, you think it's unfair, you feel very, uh, you feel hurt that the other person accused you falsely. So we accept the feelings first before we help the person further. Okay, and then listening. Why is it so hard for people to hear what his spouse or children say? Says, say, instead, it should be say. It's hard to hear what people say because, because we have a tendency that we already accuse the person. We don't like the person. He has always done something wrong, so this time he has done something wrong again. Or we, we say, well, it's your problem. I don't care. So people don't have enough care and acceptance of people. So because we have time with the spouse and the children all the time, so we uh, very often we don't feel, we don't accept them how they are. Did your spouse or children say that you did not hear them? So did they say that to you, that you don't hear them? If they say that to us, don't argue. But instead, uh, ask them, uh, what have not, haven't I hurt you? And then we can say what they said. And then, did I hear you right? Someone says something, we can repeat what he said. Okay, did I hear you right? And interpret that. Uh, is that what you mean? to find out if we hear them correctly. If they regularly say to us that you don't listen, then we really need to work on listening. Number two, if someone says, my husband has just left me, what feeling does she have? So now the feeling. The feeling she would feel hurt, she would feel lonely, she would feel uh, uh, hopeless, helpless. So she could have different feelings. So we are trying to imagine what feelings they might have. We want to find out too from them what feelings they have. So how can we continue to explore? Uh, can you feel her feelings? So can you feel her feelings? Uh, uh, the person, the husband has just left her. How can we continue to explore her feelings and respond to her feelings? So how can we explore her feelings? We can ask her, so how do you feel now? How, when he said that to you, how do you feel now? How do you think about him now? How do you feel about him now? How do you feel about yourself now? So we can ask questions like that. And then if she says, I feel very angry, instead of saying, it's not right to be angry, we can say, um, how does that anger make you feel? How, how do you feel now? Uh, how does that anger affect you? So, and then number three, if you ask someone, do you like to serve God? That person answers yes very slowly. What does it show about the person? And what can you ask to find out his intention exactly? So if you ask someone to, whether you like to serve God and the person answers yes very slowly, then we know that the person is, is not ready yet. And then we can find out, we can find out uh, what he thinks. So. We always want to have the patience to find out what he thinks. The volume was under. So we want to have patience to find out uh, what he's thinking about serving God. And we accept that. The person is not ready yet to serve God. We want to accept that. And then we can help the person gradually. We don't help the person. We cannot help the person instantly by commanding them to do something. And so what does this show? about the person. He might, the person may not be ready. The person may have to have a lot of things to think through. Uh, he, 
there might be some hindrances from himself or from his family to serve God. So there might be different reasons why he responds slowly. So, and what can you ask to find out his intention exactly? So we can ask, do you want to serve God? Do you, do you think it's difficult to serve God? Do you worry about serving God? Do you think you are capable of serving God? So I'm asking him a number of questions. Do you think you can serve God? Do you think uh, you don't have the ability? Do you think you can overcome the difficulties? Do you think you can help people? So we can ask a number of questions to find out how they are. Now this takes practice to be able to ask different questions. Okay, another question number four, listening. If someone says to you, what is he feeling and how can you uh, respond? Okay, so if someone says this to you, I'm unhappy. So how can we respond? Now why do I spend so much time here? Because we want to be able to, to respond to people's feelings and to be able to help them. Uh, to able to uh, help them accept the feelings, help them feel accepted before we can help them. Uh, le let me ask you this question. If you think about your family members, is there one family member that makes you feel very happy, that you feel un uh, accepted? And then can you think of a family member who doesn't accept you, that he always just teach you and say you're wrong? So which person are you willing to go to when you have a problem? It's very obvious. We want to go to the person who accepts us. And then we, when we talk to them, they are listening and responding with acceptance. But the other person always say, you've done wrong, you've done wrong, you have to pray, to for, ask for forgiveness, you have to change. You, uh, so just keep telling us. Then it makes us distrust the person. So we want to help the person to trust us. So if someone says, I'm unhappy, uh, so how can we respond? We can say, I'm sorry to hear that you're unhappy. Can you tell me more about it? Uh, what caused you to be unhappy? So we want to ask. And if the person says something, we ask more questions. My wife and I yelled at each other again. So we want to find out. Uh, first, we want to find out the feeling. So how, how are you feeling now? Um, are you feeling angry or hurt or frustrated uh, what are you feeling now and and then we can find out uh, what has happened and how is your wife feeling now okay and then a person says my husband never listened to me then we we can say oh i know that is not easy that your husband did not listen to you and uh, makes you feel very unhappy that he doesn't care about you and you feel hurt. So we want to accept his, uh, her feeling. My children don't listen to me. So we'll say, oh, I'm sorry that your children don't listen to you. So you feel uh, you are not respected. Your uh, people don't respect you, don't uh, take you seriously. And then uh, God doesn't respond to my prayers. So someone thinks that God doesn't respond to the prayers. So we can f uh, say, oh, you feel disappointed in God, don't you? Now, it's wrong to be disappointed in God. But at that point when he thinks that God is not responding to his prayer, then he's thinking he's disappointed in God. Maybe he says, no, I'm not disappointed in God. But God just doesn't, didn't answer me. So so uh, so I can say, well, do you feel frustrated that God has not responded to you yet? You feel helpless because God did not respond to you yet. So we want to find out the feelings and accept that. And then guide the person to, over, to ex understand where the problem is and how to overcome the problem. I want to leave this church. I'm spiritually... Uh, so if someone says, I want to leave this church. Now, many pastors will say, don't leave, don't leave. Instead, we can, uh, we can say, I, uh, oh, I'm sorry to hear that you want to leave the church and you must feel very disappointed. Uh, can you tell me more about it? Uh, so we want to accept the feeling and let the person talk about what happens and respond to the person's feeling and needs and difficulties. 
and then we want to ask the person, do you want, do you think there is a way that we you uh, that you can work on it and to overcome this problem? Do you want to work on it? Uh, when we counsel, don't just have the goal of keeping the person in the church. We want to keep the person in the church, but we want to be able to help the person spiritually. We want to help the person to face this difficulty. Okay, and then someone says, I'm spiritually very weak. Then we say, oh, I know that is, uh, you feel weak now and you have no strength. You feel uh, helpless. Uh, you feel desperate. So you accept the feeling of a person who is spiritually weak. And then we try to help the person to, to accept himself and to find a source of the problem and how to overcome the problem. I don't want to pray. Some people say, you have to pray. But we'll say, uh, I'm sorry you feel that you don't want to pray, that you, you don't have the motivation. Can you tell me more about it? How do you feel about God? How do you feel about prayer now? So we can accept and ask questions. Life is too difficult. Uh, instead of saying, no, it's not. We say, oh, tell me about it. And how do you feel now? You must feel hurt and disappointed. You feel uh, uh, there is no way, you think there's no way out. So you feel hopeless and desperate, disappointed in life. So we want to accept that. And we want to basically stand by the person to accept his feelings. And then someone says, I can't understand the Bible. Instead of saying, you read the Bible more and then you can understand. Uh, and then we can say, so what is the feeling? Someone doesn't understand the Bible. The feeling would be, he would, he would uh, feel uh, hopeless, uh, that he you know, has ho no hope to understand the Bible, or he is very, uh, he feel, uh, has a feeling of low self-image, that he's not capable. So he feel um, unhappy about himself, being incapable, incapable. So we want to accept that. Oh, uh, no, I know that it's very difficult for to, you to understand the Bible. And um, where do you think the problem comes from? And then how can we overcome that? So the first response always, whatever, is even not a counseling situation. Some, someone just talk to you. Instead of just saying, do this, do that, or you have done something wrong, we can say, uh, I know you don't feel happy about it. Uh, makes you feel uh, desperate or difficult. Okay. And someone says, I don't know what I live for. Then we'll say, oh, I'm sorry. So we think, imagine that we have no nothing to uh, live for, that he doesn't know what to live for. I know what well, you, you must have lost hope. You must have feel desperate that you don't know what to do with your life. I want more strength. And uh, now the f one thing we can say, oh, I'm, I'm happy that you, you want more strength. I'm happy that. And I know that you might feel sometimes you have not much strength, so you feel disappointed in yourself. But, uh, but I want to tell you that God wants to give you more strength. Do believe that you can have more strength. So we can uh, accept the feeling and guide the person to face this problem. My life has been filled with problems and sadness. So we want to accept that and listen to the person and then uh, say, Oh, I'm sorry to hear that your life has been so difficult. Uh, it must be, it must make you feel unhappy and sad. Uh, you feel, maybe you feel hopeless about uh, the future. So we'll find out the feelings. How do you feel now? My parents treated me very badly. So we'll, uh, we'll say, I'm sorry to hear that. It must make you feel sad. Now we don't have to accuse the husband. We don't have to accuse the other person. We just say, you feel bad about yourself. You feel unhappy about yourself. So we can, you can name his feelings or find out his feeling. I wish I had been born to this. I wish I had not been born to this world. So if someone says, then we say, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, that you don't want to live in this world. And uh, 
you must feel very desperate and unhappy about it. Okay, I don't like my life. And uh, we can ask, oh, tell me more about it. And uh, I f you must have feel unhappy about your life. You feel disappointed in your life. I doubt God. So uh, instead of saying, there are many proofs about God, we can say, at this point, you must feel uh, unsure. You feel unsure about God. You're not sure about God. It makes you feel weak. You make you feel uncertain. Um, so we want to accept the feelings first before we continue to help the person. Okay, guide the counselee to express. Demonstrate how to use these methods to guide people to express themselves. Ask questions, repeat what he has said, or use a different way to express what he has said. So how can we guide the counselee to express? We guide him to express by saying, oh, uh, you just told me you feel very unhappy. So we repeat what he said. You just told me you feel very unhappy. That's uh, repeating what he said or ask questions. So tell me more about what happened. So how do you feel now? So these are some questions. Uh, or use a different way to express what he has just said. Uh, so he said, um, I, um, I have problem with my husband. So the expression tells us that, he's, that she is unhappy. Then we can say, oh, so does the relationship with the husband make you feel unhappy? Do you find it difficult to relate to him? Uh, so we use different ways to ask the questions, to guide him to talk. How do you respond and accept his feelings when he says that he's very happy, exci excited, angry? So this different feeling. If he's very happy, we say, I'm happy for you, I'm happy for you. Mm -hmm.